embroidery friends. For those that don't know me, my name is Kristen Som. I do lots of tutorials for embroidery projects and I'm starting a new project this coming week and it's called Merry Christmas Bench Pillow. If you haven't done a bench pillow before, this would be really fun. You can get the design from Wish Upon a Quilt and they also have a package for um, all of the fabrics and a thread kit and everything that you need. So if you want to join me on this adventure, I am going to do one challenge every day and I will post a video tutorial and you can play along and have fun with this. I'm pretty excited about it. So let's get playing. Also, Wish Upon a Quilt has created a code for anyone that's going to join in this group project with me. You can put in on your order the code KristenMC, and I'll put that in the tutorial in this first video. And if you add that on to the comments of your order, then they're going to send you a free little something in your delivery. So anyway, wishuponaquilt.com and I'll get all the information in the video. Do you want to make a Christmas bench pillow with me? Let's do it. fans of Wish Upon a Quilt, Lori told me that some of you have purchased the Merry Christmas Bench Pillow and not made it yet. So she asked if I would do a group project and I brought over some extra friends and we're going to do it together and it will be so fun. So if you haven't already, you need to get the CD for the Merry Christmas Bench Pillow by Lori Kent Designs through Wish Upon a Quilt and I'll add a link in the uh, description below this video. And then it comes with the fabric kit and look at how cute these are. It comes with the glitter fabrics or glitter vinyl and all the fabrics that we're gonna need. So that will be really fun. And I also got the thread kit. I'll add a link to that as well. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and make a bench pillow. it's time to get started so I've decided I'm gonna quilt my main fabric and I'll give a few tips along the way on on how to do that but you do not have to quilt it first you can leave it unquilted or you can take it to a long arm quilter after it's all done whatever works for you so here's the thing is I cut my main fabric to about nine inches wide by long all right our main fabric is supposed to be eight and a half by 28 and a half but I decided to just leave it long for now be in case it pulls a little bit with the quilting so it's not necessary to cut it until we're done so the other thing that I did is see the crease down the center I ironed a crease down the center so that when I'm hooping I can make sure that it's straight that's a really easy way to make sure that it's straight so I told you about the cutting so one thing that I did so First off, make sure to put fusible stabilizer of some sort, SF-101 or fusible mesh stabilizer or whatever works for you, but you want a fusible stabilizer on the back of your main fabric. It really helps to not pucker. You're also, if you quilt it, you'll also have batting. So the batting I cut to exactly what I needed, eight and a half by 28 and a half. And the reason that I did that is so that if there is runoff, because there will be, um, then it will not have batting in my seams. So the extra quilting will go off the edge here, 
but it won't matter because I'm going to cut after to the size that I need and the batting won't be in there. And by the way, I'm sorry, I said this wrong. It, I said eight and a half by 28 and a half, but I cut it to eight by 28. So that's what gives me my quarter inch seam allowance all the way around and no batting in my seams. So eight by 28, sorry for the mistake. All right, so get your batting. I use warm and natural, whatever batting you have will work just fine. Fusible stabilizer on the back of the um, main fabric and a center crease down the middle to help with uh, placement. All right, let's get started. All right, I have hoop tear away. You could use uh, mesh cut away or tear away. Either one works totally fine, but I have that hooped and then I'm gonna float my main fabric on top. So to float my fabric, I wanna make sure and get it placed right. And that's why we did that center guide. But the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use these buttons here and I'm gonna start it all the way to the left. And that shows me where the first stitch is going to be right down here and so I will place my fabric I'll do it get the off camera first <laughs> but anyway I'm gonna place my fabric so that it starts right here hold on okay once I have my fabric placed centered I'm gonna use the buttons on the machine I'll try and zoom in after but I need both hands here so I'm going to use the right button to see that it's going to go all across that center line and that tells me that my fabric is straight. Okay, so you can see that I have it all the way to the left right now and this little green arrow crosshair shows you where it's going to start stitching and where that center point is. So that means that I want to have at least a quarter inch seam allowance. I've got my fab my uh, batting under there and I've got it centered along this center crease here. So then when I press this button, I can see that it runs all along this center line. So once I know that it's straight, then I'm going to pin, pin, pin and get it all um, tacked down very well with my pins. All centered, ready to go. Okay, once you have your first hooping of quilting done, then it's time to line it up for the second one. It doesn't have to be exact because we're using a continuous line design that doesn't attach to each other, but that depends on what you use, of course. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go back to these buttons and from the center, we're going to go all the way to the left which will be the right of our previous design. So from the right of our previous di design, we're gonna start to the left of the second design. And you can see that it doesn't have to be exact, but we're gonna just get it close to this other one, the, the last design. And then we're gonna use those buttons to make sure that it's all clear and that we're not gonna overlap and most importantly that our center guide is accurate so I usually put my foot down to check it and then once you know that you're on that center line and you're where you want to be in in correlation with the first design then again pin it and we'll get going on the second one Okay, I'm on the last hooping. So I've done three full hoopings and now I'm on the last one. 
that um, really I only need about three and a half inches of the design but I'm gonna go ahead and do all eight inches of it because this is a square design and it only comes in squares so um, you could definitely alter the design you could bring it into sew what pro and um, cut off part of it no problem or whatever embroidery software you have I should say I use sew what pro um, so I'll show you on the fabric. Hold on. So when you get to the last hooping, you can feel where your batting ends if you cut your batting exactly right. So my batting ends here. So that's really all the quilting that I need. But I'm going to go ahead and just do the whole thing because I'm going to cut it off anyway. It doesn't really matter. The other option is if you were to do a Kimberbell quilt design, they have lots of sizes, even in um, like two by eight, and it, that would be the easiest thing. But I chose this design for this one, um, and so I'm going to go ahead and just let it run off. Again, you could bring it into embroidery software and cut the design off, whatever's going to work. Okay, so to start our bench pillow, the first thing that we're going to do is take our main fabric and cut it to eight and a half by 28 and a half and your green fabric to four and a half by 28 and a half and the red fabric to four and a half by 28 and a half. So the mine came already four and a half inches wide, but the length is not accurate. So um, you get some extra fabric. So make sure to cut that to 28 and a half. And then we're going to sew the green one onto the top of our white main fabric and the red one to the bottom of our main fabric with a quarter inch seam allowance on both. That's the first step. Let's get started. One thing also is it looks like there are going to be snowflakes and Santa feet and the Santa hat that are going to go up onto the red and green fabrics. And so I am going to use fusible mesh stabilizer onto the back. Actually, I'm going to use SF 101. They work the same um, onto the back of both of these fabrics to help stabilize them. So that's my little hint for you. Hey, Wish Upon a Quilt fans, Kristen Som here. Let's go ahead and move on to section two and do the Merry Christmas. Are you ready? Hey, Wish Upon a Quilt fans. So you probably received an email today saying that there was a problem with the Merry Christmas bench pillow. Um, design so they're working on that and in the meantime I thought maybe we could skip ahead so the era that I found is on the Santa but I think that we can go ahead and start on the we'll skip the Santa and start on the next part which is the Merry Christmas so um, there's a couple minor things on this one um, on my CD, the basting stitch is on uh, step four instead of step one. So 
that's an easy workaround. You can obviously wait until they update the file, but if you're going to start now um, or continue now, then all you would do is load your design to your USB stick and skip the steps down to the fourth step and run the basting stitch first and then go back to the first step. So that's an easy workaround in my opinion. Um, I think I'm actually not even going to use the basting stitch. Uh, the basting stitch does go over the letters a little bit and so I think it'll be harder to get the basting stitch up to, to rip it away or cut it away. Um, so I'm just not going to use it. I like to pin anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and not use the basting stitch. Um, the other thing that you can do if you like to use the basting stitch, which definitely helps to keep your fabric in place. Um, but the other thing that you can do is you can import the design into software and manually move it. That's easy to do. Um, and like I said, they are going to do an update anyway, and so you can certainly wait, but if you want to um, continue with the project now for Christmas, then um, we can just do a little work around on this part and, and um, we'll get to the Santa when some things are fixed. So anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and um, continue on with our bench pillow tutorial and we'll jump to the second section, which is called Merry Christmas. Here we go. One other thing that I think might be helpful is that for the Merry Christmas design, we need an 8x12 hoop. So you can go ahead and start getting that ready um, without loading your design just yet, if, if that's helpful. I like to know the size beforehand. So working on section two. Okay, so we want to start with our needle directly over the mark that we made for our second hooping for the Merry Christmas. I don't know if you can see, but it's right on in there. And then they also have this template that you can use and put that directly over the middle as well to help check placement. And then you can use the buttons on your machine to see where it's going to stitch. Mine goes past the basting stitch a bit, um, but that's fine. And that's a good way to make sure that your fabric is straight. And see where it's going to stitch. Make sure to check the orientation of your fabric. It should be facing uh, to the left with the green on the top and the red on the bottom and your design is going to go this way. I hope that makes sense. to move on, let's do the next one with the trees and the snowflakes. Hey, we 
Joy Chaponic quilt fans. So our next step is to do the trees and the snowflakes. And there's a couple of things with this one. So once you get it all centered, obviously just like before, we're gonna use our placement stitch, um, or I'm sorry, our placement guide that we marked earlier as our beginning. So you wanna center your fabric over that marker that we made before. This one, as you can see, it goes right to the edge here. And so when, if you pin, just make sure to leave a little space here for the star. So there's one little um, thing about this one. The star stitches outside of the basting box. So um, I'm not gonna use the basting box, but if you do, just, um, just know that that star is going to go pretty far over here. So when you get your, your hoop into your machine, you'll be able to see um, if you use that button that makes it show where it's gonna stitch that this part, it'll hit into the pin so because of that star. So just be careful um, to maybe not pin right there if you pin or if you use the basting box, that'll work fine too. Um, there's also one other thing. It says that the steps are, um, there's nine steps, but actually there's 10. Number seven was left out, a tack down stitch, so that it's just out of order a little bit. Not really out of order, but it's not, um, on the instructions, it's not listed correctly. So um, as I mentioned before, they are gonna work on an update for this design, but this is a little little fix, not a problem at all. So we can move on if you're ready, I'm going to move on. Um, so we're gonna do the trees and the snowflakes next. So let's get started. to work on the Santa for the Merry Christmas bench pillow? Let's do it. Hey 
Hey, Wish Upon a Quilt fans, it's time to work on the Santa for our Merry Christmas bench pillow. So today you're going to need the black felt out of your fabric kit and the white minky and the glitter sheets, uh, green, gold, and blue. The rest of the stitching is all in a fill stitch, so these are the only items that we need for our applique. And we'll need a 9 by 14 hoop today. If you don't have a large enough hoop, then watch in the directions. There are, um, in the instruction file, the PDF, there are instructions on how to use a smaller hoop and break it up into two different um, designs. I'm going to use the 9 by 14 hoop on the tutorial. Um, so the basting, a couple things. The basting box is just a tiny bit smaller than the design, so it will work fine. You can definitely use the basting box, no problem. Um, make sure and use latte for the face, not the salmon. The salmon color is for uh, the details on the face, and then they use uh, latte for the actual face. So that's one quick thing to note. And I'll go over all the thread colors in the tutorial. Um, so one thing is that if you follow that number one marker that we did, um, it will stitch off center by a lot. Actually, it'll stitch off the fabric. So we're going to make some adjustments and Wish Upon a Quilt is making adjustments to the file so you can just wait if you prefer. But I'm going to go ahead and, and figure out a workaround and um, get this Merry Christmas bench pillow ready for Christmas. So join me if it works for you. I'd love to have you join me and um, I'll go over how to make it work and where to line it up. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's talk about placement for just a minute. Um, we made this number one marker um, in the very beginning, and I've drawn a marker on the top of the template of where that marker is. So if we were to line up our, um, our first stitch with that, then when we go to the top to do the stars, you can see it's gonna stitch even outside of our fabric. So that's a mistake and they're working on that, but I've figured out a workaround and so you're welcome to join me on this workaround that I think will center our Santa just fine. So instead of starting at that marker, which you can see up here, I instead decided to center it using my center guides, these little markers here on each end of the hoop. And I lined it up exactly from that point and it works really well. So from here, it's basically about two and a quarter inches from where that original marker was. And I centered it, I measured out from here and from the side. And I think it'll work really well to just have it, the Santa be the center here. And so I printed out the template and I measured it all and pinned it all and sized it all. and. This is working really well. I haven't stitched it yet. I wanted to give some information first. So you can print out the template, fold it in half, measure it up, do what I did, or I will figure out exactly what point that this is from the center or even from that first marker. I'll give some options so that you can figure out what will work for you. Um, but I think that this will center it really well. So you're welcome to join me and finish up your Christmas bench pillow in time for Christmas. Let's do it. Okay. 
Okay, so from our new center point, which is eight and three quarters from the center on the center line, not moving it up at all, just right on that center line. This is our, our new um, center mark. From that mark, let me put this template back down so you can see where it's going to stitch. Sorry for the moving phone. Um, so from here, if I move the buttons on my machine to see where it's going to stitch, you can see that it's still on the fabric and everything is centered and it's going to stitch within our um, guide here. All right, and then back down. well within the fabric. So eight and three quarters inch from the center, I think works really great. Our Santa is um, exactly centered among our fabric. So if you want to go for it before um, the update, join me in this adventure. And let's finish up this Merry Christmas bench pillow. This Santa is gonna be so cute. Fun, fun, fun. Quick tip, don't forget that you can use these buttons to make sure that your fabric is straight and it's easy since we're gonna work on the center line. We still have that crease that goes down, sorry, my hand's in the way, right down this center. And when I push these buttons, I can see that my fabric where I'm gonna stitch is right along that center guide. So then I know that my fabric is straight. Cause there are times when you get this all in and it can be wonky and turned a little bit and boy, you'll see it in your design. So just make sure that you use that center line down the horizontal to make sure that your fabric is straight and then go ahead and pin in place if you choose or use the basting box that's provided that either one will work great. All right, let's go.
think? Should we finish up our Merry Christmas bench pillow by Wish Upon a Quilt? What do we do with all these strips? <laughs> Let's figure it out. All right, so if you're all caught up, you've got your top done, all embroidered and ready for more. So, Next we are going to do the sides and to do the sides we've got all these long strips of fabric in our fabric kit from Wish Upon a Quilt and if you have the usual bench pillow which is 16 by 38 then we want to cut these to two and a half by five and a half and we want eight of them. You can mix them up however you like but we want eight strips down the left side and the right side and um then we're gonna add our backing and then we're done with our bench pillow and it's christmas so tell me did you finish yours in time for christmas